Some of you people keep up with me on Facebook and other places, and uh, most of you don't. But there's been some interesting stuff going on in my life the past two months, and a lot of my automotive projects have been kind of put on the back burner. So today we're going to get the Corolla running, which is a crank no-start issue. I uh, kind of, eh, hot-wired is not really the right word, but worked around the issue, but we're going to pull it up, and I'm going to show you guys how to fix a crank no-start um, not just on a Corolla, but on lots of different vehicles that have a distributor that you may be having an issue with. This is specifically a crank no start with no spark. Also, I spent um, about 20 minutes, two months ago now, um, working on it just to find out that the capacitor inside the distributor is bad. And this capacitor is a little bit different than the old uh, condenser type setup like you're used, with, uh, used to seeing with points, ignition systems. This is actually like a capacitor for noise suppression and stuff like that on an electronically controlled distributor. So the distributor has, you know, works off crank and cam sensors and all that. It's more modern than a point system. But anyway, let's go hop in the Toyota, see if it'll fire up. It's been sitting, uh, like I said, for about two months. All right, the Toyota has always been really reliable. I haven't ever had any issues out of it, even though it's been making that ticking or knocking sound ever since I bought it. But i um, been on one gambler and this was my daily driver. What I found was the ignition fuse was blown down inside here. Um, and whenever I put a new one in, it would just keep blowing. So that is going to be on this specific vehicle. Which one is it right there? That 10 amp. So I did try to bypass it. And the little wire that I used to bypass it. Uh, instantly burned up and started melting. So yanked that sucker out of there and knew that we had a problem somewhere else. So let's go ahead and see if this thing will crank. We'll drive it up to the front there and get it in a more um, workable position, better for lighting and stuff. Yeah, there we go. Get in the shade here and get some good lighting going on. So with any crank no start, the first thing you obviously want to do is isolate um, why it is not starting. The easiest thing to do is just spray starting fluid somewhere in the intake, see if it fires off. Fuel issue is going to be the easiest thing you can test for. Um, that was the first thing I did. Didn't run, so figured out it's definitely an ignition problem. There's a capacitor in here that goes bad, and the way to test it to see if yours is bad is you're going to take your wiring harness and unplug it from the rest of the engine harness and you need to probe the black uh, wire right here that has a red or orange tracer on it so black and red black and orange whatever you want to call it looks more orange to me and you're going to test between that wire and ground you should have no continuity there should be absolutely nothing if your meter goes off or you show some resistance or some continuity you know that your capacitor is bad and the reason why is because this terminal right here, this black with the orange, is your positive side of the coil. Now you see it has two wires on it. One goes out to the wiring harness. The other one goes down with a brown wire to the capacitor. If that capacitor fails like, uh, like mine did, it's going to short the case out. And that means that we have a direct ground touching our 12-volt uh, hot on the coil. So that's why if you test between this connector and ground and it is shorted, you can assure that your capacitor is bad without even pulling this thing apart. And that's what I did before I did any of this. So I pulled this thing apart, bypassed it. That, that's how I was able to drive the vehicle. Now let's go ahead and take it to the workbench and I'll show you how to replace it. We've got the distributor on the workbench. I have the dust shield taken off and the rotor. These things just pull off. And um, now we can kind of take a look inside here. So besides the crack at the top of the coil, I do see something kind of weird, which is that blue goo over there. And there isn't anything around that area that would make blue goo, so that's a little strange. And then if we look here on the shaft, there's some blue goo on the bottom of the shaft, which is also kind of weird. Well, if we keep looking around, 
right back there, you can barely see it, is the capacitor. And um, if we look at the top of the capacitor, you guys may have a really hard time seeing it. Right inside there, there's a bunch of blue goo. And take a look at the new capacitor. We have some blue stuff that's that same color that has not yet turned to goo. So this capacitor has melted down and that is our short. That's what's causing our no spark issue. And how it's causing it is uh, this wire right here, if I can get it out. This is, this is what I did to make the car run. Got in the distributor, disconnected the uh, capacitor wire here from the positive side of the coil and just kind of tucked it in there um, to the side and it was just fine. But what was happening, something in the capacitor burnt up and it caused a direct short to the uh, distributor case because it's screwed down or bolted to the case, right? So this center wire was making contact uh, with the body because of whatever happened inside of it. And this is ground. And what it was attached to right here, that's the positive, positive of the coil. So we had a direct short from 12 volts on the coil to ground. That's what blew our fuse out. So if that is your problem, then this is how we're going to fix it. Uh, really isn't too hard of a job. Just need a few basic tools. Obviously, as you saw to get this thing out, you need a uh, eight millimeter for the cap, 12 millimeter for the hold down bolt. And then we're going to need a seven for the two uh, nuts on here. I'm going to go ahead and replace the ignition coil, but I'm going to keep it in the glove box because one, this is a gambler car. Doesn't hurt to have an extra ignition coil. And two, the coil is still good. And um, OEM Toyota stuff is amazing. It lasts forever. So we're going to hang on to it. But um, go ahead and get this thing cracked open here. If you look on your new coil, it will tell you most likely positive and negative. I'll put a link in the description to a good coil. Don't get a crappy one. This isn't a hard job, but it's definitely not a job that you want to have to fix on the side of the road. There's a little bit in depth. This gasket right here almost always go ba goes bad. Just FYI, it's your uh, seal for the distributor cap. So just try to be careful with it. My new ignition, my new ignition coil did not come with hardware, so I'll have to keep that from this one. All right, got those wires off of there. Next up, we'll go ahead and remove the coil, which is going to be those four Phillips head screws in the back. Okay. All right. So there's our ignition coil. Like I said, it's good. So we can set it to the side. There are some tests that you can do online to see if your primary and secondary windings are good. You're going to test between um, this one here, that one there, and there's your negative side. That's the output uh, for the coil. looks a little bit different than what you're probably used to. Um, there's plenty of good videos on that, so I'm not going to really go uh, really in depth. But that's all we have to do to get this guy out. We can see that capacitor has just puked its guts all over the place. The center wire isn't even centered anymore. But let's see if we can get this screw loose here. Yeah, there we go. If this one gives you trouble, um, you could use some vice grips, luckily, on the side of it, it looks like. There's our old one, and there's our new one. They look pretty much the same, except one is all toasty. All right, let's get that new capacitor in there. Just gonna slide it down. It has a little slot at the bottom, so you can't really get it wrong. It's also got one on the side, that little tang there, and that tang there are gonna go into that slot and that slot. There we go. Got it lined up. Just hold it with the back of my finger there. Okay, we've got way too much silicone on there, so that's great. My tube exploded. I just had to use my fingers. Set our coil in its place. Get these screws tightened down.
Okay, new coils in. Get our gasket rerouted around there. We can stick our ignition coil terminals back on. Well, that's all there is to it. I'm not gonna go through reinstalling everything because I wanna keep this video as short as possible because if you're watching it, um, most likely you wanna get your car running again. So you can go ahead and do what I showed you in this video. Car should be running. I will put a link in the description to this capacitor. It is not easy to find, I'll tell you that. Most auto parts stores are gonna tell you it doesn't exist or they don't have it. So you're gonna to have to custom order it with a part number from those places um, or just order it online. With Amazon, you can get everything like next day pretty much. So. Uh, one more piece of advice is replace the seal on your distributor before you put it back together. Mine has been leaking, it looks like, for quite a long time. There's a whole bunch of deposits down inside there. Now, obviously, if you're on the side of the road and you got to do this quick, you can just disconnect the capacitor like I showed you, keep on driving. But if we're here in the shop, might as well fix it right. So let's get a seal on that thing, and the Corolla will be running and driving again. I promise I will do a video on this car soon. A lot of the comments in my other video about the lift kit on how to lift this car have been like, tell us about the car. What about the roof rack and the winch and all that kind of stuff. And I promise I'll do a video soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.